Welcome back to State of Decay 2 and the Assembly. Uh, for some reason, I've got everyone in the community with a weird costume on, uh, standing here staring at Azad. They're like looking at him and they're like, hey, uh, didn't you say you were going to go out and get some electronics? Why are you still standing here? Go out and get some electronics, Azad. Okay, fine. Fine. We're going to go get some electronics. So, uh, yeah, so my goal right now uh, is to upgrade my command center, which requires a bunch of stuff. It requires some uh, materials. Uh, I'm close to the materials uh, that I need, but I also need scraps of circuitry. Actually, let me see how far off I am from the 10 scraps of circuitry that I need. Have a look in, is it, uh, where is it, here? Yeah, we've got seven. Okay, so we only need three scraps of circuitry and three materials. So that won't be too bad, right? That, that, that shouldn't be too hard. The question is, where do I need to look? So, uh, let's look for power stations. Power stations. I don't know where anything is. Flooded factory. Utility shed. Okay, so this might actually contain materials. And because it's a utility shed, it might also have electronics. So let's start there. But then there's probably some better spots. There's a water place, which I don't think will have the same thing. Me sitting here not knowing my own maps. So we got water stuff down in the south. I'm not seeing... Yeah, there's the old mill. I'm sure someone in the chat is like, uh, I know exactly where the power station is here. See, we I've got the builder boot. And so, you know, I, I just wasn't paying any attention <laughs> to where the... Uh, to where it was. Hmm. And a lot of the other maps, I know exactly where the power is. But a meager valley, I don't have it. I mean, because meager valley's got this, right? Like the wind farm. And actually, you know what? Come to think of it, as far as I know, there might actually be electronics at the wind farm. And that's closer to me than this place down here. Uh, and actually, this is probably a water utility shed. There's tons of water around here. Uh, there's not nearly as much electricity. So, okay, let's start here. I, I have low hopes that, that's what, that I'm actually going to find what I want there. But we'll do our best. Hey, Ranathcord uh, has showed up. Good to see you, Ranathcord. Uh, Yoda wants to know if we've added any new background music in the uh, in the public test realm. Uh, not to my knowledge. I don't. I don't think we would be doing that just because. Yeah, we we have we haven't really been exploring new music. We did add new music uh, with the oh gosh, with the homecoming update. Uh, I believe. And so it could be that you heard some new music that you haven't heard yet that came in with the Homecoming update and you just haven't noticed it yet. Um, that's entirely possible. Oh gosh, there's a lot of zombies chasing me around. Hold on a second. See what I can do about that nonsense. I'd really rather not have to fight this many zombies. So let's see, without destroying my car, how many of them I can take out. That wasn't too bad. Oh no, the prepper ant mission expired. What will I do? Well, we've got chemicals if we need chemicals, which is not what I was here for. Take that. Here's a tub that could contain anything. Yeah, so, <laughs> Cloudcraft is uh, jokingly protesting that I welcomed Ranathcord and not him. Uh, so, I was actually struggling at the beginning because I, I've got such a tradition of Ranathcord saying, Mornin', the moment my, my stream starts. I've been using that. Oh, by the way, look, I got my electronics. Uh, I've been using that to, like, assure myself that I'm actually live streaming. You know, that, that nothing has gone wrong. And so, Randolph Court was a little bit later today than usual. And so, I was having, like, a little tiny panic attack that, <laughs> that things weren't working. Um, and so, when he showed up, I was like, oh, good, Randolph Court is here. Then, then, then all is right with the universe. So, that's why Randolph Court got, got sort of uh, uh, special treatment there. Okay, so we do have what we need. So I think I'm still going to head down here, though, because materials are the other thing that I need. And, and it looks like this place might offer both of my requirements. So I'm going to head down this direction. 
But yeah, so uh, Cloudcraft is joking also that I should I should plan my streaming schedule around him. Uh, so actually, if you want to know my streaming schedule, I have now officially posted it. Uh, I had an old version up for a while, but uh, if you poke around on my channel, you should actually see that I've posted my schedule. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm always going to be on time. In fact, you know, today I had a meeting that ran into half of my lunch break, and I started my stream, you know, half an hour late. And that's going to happen. Like, oh, hello. Um, I have to, pri I always have to prioritize work ahead of my stream. And so that's going to, that's going to happen fairly often. And this stream that I'm doing right now is actually half an hour earlier than the schedule says. So, you know, it's just, I'm all over the place, but you can at least get a rough idea of when I'm attempting to stream, which, uh, hopefully will be helpful. Now we've got a slight problem here, which is that there's a juggernaut guarding this site. And he noticed me before. I don't know where he is now exactly. Okay, he did chase me down that hill. So he's down there, away from the site, which I think means I can sneak in here and grab a few things before he comes back. Hopefully. Hopefully that's how it's going to go. So here's the door. So I'm hoping that I get some materials here. That's the most important thing. Wouldn't mind getting more electronics, even though I've got enough. I mean, you can never have too much, too many motherboards okay. lying around. I need immediate assistance, please. So Wrath of Vaden is uh, teasing me a little bit, asking when I'm going to do the typical Twitch streamer thing of doing a 24-hour stream. I don't think I will ever do a 24-hour stream. Uh, because I have four children and a lot of responsibilities. And, you know, I, I've i found ways to carve out time for me to sort of do my own thing, but that can't be all of my time. Uh, I mean, I, I could imagine, you know, in a, a, like an alternate version of me with a very different life doing that sort of thing. It does sound like it could be kind of a fun challenge. I used to challenge myself a lot when I was in college to do things like, you know, pull all-nighters and things. So it sounds like the kind of challenge that I would be interested in theoretically but in practical terms it doesn't really fit with my life uh, which is you know I think fine all right so another ah oh, get off my door all right so I've got I've satisfied the basic requirements of why I came out here I've got the materials I've got the electronics but I'm gonna keep going mostly just because I got space in my inventory. And also because uh, another sort of major thing I'm missing is I do not have a lot of ammo. And I do want to do a Blitz of Plague Hearts sometime soon. And that's gonna be a lot easier if I've got a bunch of ammo and explosives. So, I do have enough fuel that I can make a lot of fire. And that's gonna be, that's gonna be helpful. I think I need more than that. So I'm gonna look around and see if I can find some nice ammo sources. I thought this might be one. We'll see what's in here. So, Ranathcourt is saying that uh, now that I've revealed how important his initial greeting is to me, uh, he, he's actually tempted to troll me on purpose and, 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 and greet me less consistently in the future. Uh, that is up to you. I will just, uh, at, over time, I will become less dependent on you, and that will be fine. So yeah, Cloudcraft is advising him that he actually needs to pace it out so that he's still doing it just enough that I remain dependent, uh, but screwing it up enough just to, uh, to, to, to maximize how much I'm being bothered. So like, I, I really appreciate it when people have, you know, really um, helpful priorities. <laughs> Okay, well, we're getting a lot of useful stuff here. I'm, I'm feeling good about this trip. Hello there, Sunny Games. It's good to see you. Uh, I don't know if you caught wind of... Uh, I mentioned you several times in my last stream. Um, mostly kind of making fun of how much you made out of one tiny non-committal quote from me uh, <laughs> that you got out of a previous video. Um, and so there's a few times where I, you know, people ask me questions about the future of the franchise and I give like, you know, tentative answers that, that don't really, don't really offer that much 
Oh crap. No, no. Get away. Nope, this is not good. All right. Get, no, stop. I just get your friends off the car. Oh. Great, okay, fine. Well, Sunny, I'll talk to you in a second. I got bigger problems now. Oh crap, I didn't grab any fire either. I forgot to bring fire. Okay, okay. Is this thing usable? No gas, so no. All right. Well, if I can get to an outpost, I can't. All right, well, I have to get to an outpost. Like, I'm trying to... I guess, no, I could... I could call in a car. That would cost me influence. And I kind of... I want my influence. Oh, great. I just made a bunch of noise with a horde next door. That's not going to last for long. Okay. Hold on. Oh, my gosh. They just keep being more zombies. Ah. Okay. The music is telling me that I might have lost them. No! Do not get on my back! Stop the biting thing! Oh, the biting thing pisses me off. <laughs> Why did I make that so damaging to your infection meter? Why? I gotta just keep running! I thought I could stop up there, but uh, no. No, I couldn't. Dang it, how many zombies are behind me? A lot. Alright. It's like three quarters of a kilometer away. So I probably should switch characters because this guy is so sick from that one bite. And, uh, you know, so the reason that I gave the bite so much, uh, had it do so much damage to the infection meter is mostly just because it's a fairly rare attack. Uh, and so it felt like, you know, it had room to do a little bit more damage. And just because, you know, zombie bites are supposed to be infectious, right? Like, that's just sort of a thing in the... Uh, what in in sort of the 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 canon in the genre, you know, just a big part of zombies. And so, the problem is their bites are so hard to avoid. It's like you you can sort of see a bite coming and do absolutely nothing about it. They just seize control of your character. And I think that if we had like if we had been working on difficulty levels at the very beginning of the game, and if we had planned for zombie bites to be this deadly, we probably would have made them more avoidable um, in the, uh, in you know, when you're actually engaging with them, with the animation. We probably would have made it easier to, to dodge those moves. Because right now as it stands, you know, bites are, feel, they feel a little bit random and frustrating. And that kind of, that kind of bugs me. Ugh, okay, so I, a few zombies have been peeling off my my pursuers that's good if i just keep moving i can get down there and yeah maybe i'll switch characters maybe i'll grab myself a repair kit and go get my car back so yeah uh yoda wants to know if there are patch notes for today's uh update to the ptr uh, i believe Joe was working on some. I, so there might be some on the support side. I could not tell you specifically, though. That was not on me this time. So, Whew. okay, good. So I just caught that. Uh, Sunny Sunny Games did catch the last uh, the last uh, stream. Good. I was I was a little bit worried, Sunny, because I <laughs> I kept sort of. Uh, Making fun of you, I was worried that I would be uh, that I was pushing a little bit too far, because uh, I really do like and appreciate your videos a lot, and so I didn't want you to feel like I was, you know, coming after you or something like that. I'm not. I think your videos are great. They just make me nervous sometimes because it's so easy for me to say something that can be <laughs> taken out of context and turned into an entire video. Okay, so we need. Let's just make a couple of these actually. We need some toolkits. So I'll make one more. And then let's grab 
a toolkit out of here. Oh, wait, actually, hmm. again, I was saying that I might switch characters because this guy's so infected. But who else do I have? Oh, there's Fanning. You know what? Fanning has just recovered from his injuries. Let's bring him in. Uh, Fanning does not have ammo, unfortunately. So let's look at his... He's got no ammo of any kind. Okay, do we have any bullets he can actually fire? I can grab some rounds for his Stormbringer. He's got a break on it, though. Yeah, yeah, Fanning is my loud boy. He is my guy what is loud. So I... Hmm. You know what? Yeah, let's... Let's attach a suppressor to the Stormbreaker. Let's drop off the break. Let's let him go quiet. Um... As far as his sidearm goes, I do like that he's got red talon weapons, but we got to go a little bit more utilitarian this time around. Yeah. Let's give him this pistol. And actually, you know what? I'm I'm wrong. Let's put the brake back on this. And then let's stick the suppressor on the pistol. Let's reload his assault rifle so he's not taking up precious that's my space with the ammo. But yeah, so he, he's not going to have a lot of ammunition, but that's fine. I'm not actually trying to get into gunfights with zombies. That's just in case. Um, what we're going to do instead is give him some fire. If he gets into big trouble, he'll toss fire behind him, and that'll be good. Let's give him a couple of toolkits. Let's give him all the toolkits and all the gas and run him down to where we left our car. <laughs> oh, okay, so now we got to hike back. Whoa, we've got an infestation right next to a plague heart over here. That's going to be a fun time. Can't wait for that. Not doing it right now. Oh, so DNA 8791 is in here saying that uh, after watching me bravely attempt the Nightmare Zone, which I am not ready for, uh, they are also attempting the Nightmare Zone over on their side. Well, good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we're all, you know, pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone. I feel like that's a lot of what the difficulty levels in State of Decay 2 are meant to do is that, you know, this game is, is more fun when you're trying things that you're not sure you can succeed at. You know, like, I think that there is... I mean, there, there's an approach to playing a game like State of Decay where, you know, what you really want to do is just relax. And when your goal is to relax, then it's good to play at a difficulty level where, you know, you don't think you're just, you know, going to die anytime. Where it's, like, you know, it's hard enough that it's interesting, but it's not so hard that you're just constantly afraid of death. Because being constantly afraid of death isn't very relaxing. Um, I'm just going to ignore those bloaters over there. But when you're actually, like, fully engaged in the game, you're not just trying to relax, you're not trying to watch a TV show in the background or anything like that. You're fully engaged in the game. It is more fun to not be sure where your next bullet is coming from, to not be sure if you can feed your people, to not be sure that you're definitely going to be able to beat that plague heart. You know, that that feels... That's, I don't know. That just that feels more like the, the vibe you're trying to go for with a survival game. You kind of want whether you're going to survive to be a question, not to just be a foregone conclusion. So, yeah, so I think that's one of the best things that difficulty levels offered us, is that players with a lot of different skill levels and experience levels, or just preferences, can customize their experience so that they can sort of keep it at that edge where they know they can succeed, but they're not sure they will succeed. Alright, so... I'm not quite back at the back at the ranch yet, but I kind of since I'm passing through a barn anyway. Uh, I think I might as well grab some things. Oh, this is kind of a loot bonanza though, so this might maybe I'll just grab a few things here and uh, take off because like for instance there might be multiple rucksacks in here which I can't take with me. And I've already loaded up my inventory with a bunch of car consumables, so it's not like I've got a ton of space, but there can be some good stuff in here, so uh, and there we go. There's my full inventory. Wait, wait. Let's let's look at one more box. This box might, I don't know, contain something fancy. Nope. But it is something that stacks, so that's nice. Oh, why why do I just keep being tempted to open one more box? Like if the next box has got a rucksack in it, 
then I could, I've still got a spot to carry that, which makes me want to do it. There we go, rucksack of food. All right. Speaking of food, how are we doing at the base producing food? We're still at the max. Yep, we're making a profit on food. So, you know, bringing food isn't necessary, but it's useful. Oh, hey, so uh, Yoda has noticed that apparently in the uh, public test realm, we have fixed the bug that uh, allowed you to uh, basically skip sieges by teleporting home to your base at an outpost. Uh, yeah, so players have been... There's some players who really have enjoyed that method, the fact that it let them get out of sieges. But we've also got a lot of players who were like, well, that's really GG. Knowing that I can do that makes me feel almost like I have to do it, and it's actually not the fantasy <laughs> that I'm going for. Um, and so the thing, so now that we are actually giving you a lot of much more legitimate feeling tools for dealing with sieges and preventing sieges, you know, with the, with the new revision to the infestation system, it doesn't feel like we need to leave the cheese in there anymore. Like similarly, you know, the fact that I'm, you know, running at full speed despite being out of stamina right now, that was unintentional. That's a bug. But we're not fixing the bug as long as we don't have another solution for this situation because right now... You know, I would have died long ago on this cross-country trip if I had not been able to run uh, with no stamina. And so, why did I mark? Oh, because I got into that car earlier, right? I had the wrong car marked, but it's because I... Really? Really? What the heck? Why can I not... Why can I not climb over this fence? What is going on? I can climb this fence... That was weird. There are so many zombies around here and I need to be able to fix this car. Let's see, okay. Right, nice try. Dang it! Oh, it drives me absolutely crazy when I get bitten like that. All right. So the zombies are mostly moving away from the car. I wonder... Okay. All right, I guess I have to... That is messed up. I'm sad that I had to do that. I better slow my roll. Okay, I don't actually have any space. I don't have any space to drop things off in this car, so... Actually, now I do. Because now I can empty that, and I can drop things off in there. Okay, we're good now. Um, and then I can pull this out for instance and then drop the rucksack so i'm a little bit more agile things i don't want to start the car hey, as long as zombies are just going to converge on it because i need time to get the engine running and get moving oh right the zombie okay. threat Where's that plague heart hiding? Okay, so we got a couple zombies that are about to get on, but I can kill them quick. And then, dang it. Okay, okay, fine, fine. At least it's not going to explode. We're good. We're good. Let's just uh, not go over any rises that could hide surprise bloaters behind them. <gasps> well, we got a nice full trunk and a now black smoking car. Okay, let's just stick to the road. No surprises. Can clearly see ahead of me. Now I can clearly see ahead of me. I actually got, somebody made a comment, I forgot who it was, uh, on one of my uh, YouTube videos saying, um, it'd be nice if you remember to turn on your headlights when you're driving so that we can actually see what's going on. Uh, point taken. I do try to do that. Uh, I just sometimes forget, so sorry about that. Um, 
I'm going an okay direction, I guess. There are better directions to go. Yeah, so uh, aim to please is is uh, agreeing that in their experience, occasionally you will run into fences you can't jump over, and it's um, and they said that actually has nearly gotten them killed in lethal before. Uh, so yeah, I can totally see that. If you're expecting to jump over a fence and you're running away from a horde, and then the fence doesn't let you jump it, uh, I could absolutely see that getting you killed. So yeah, I'm, I remembered a, approximately the timestamp of that, so I'm gonna try to. Uh, I'll try to write a bug for that. See if we can figure out what's going on and what we can do about it. Alright. So, this car is in garbage shape. But, we're now home. Now, before I go inside and start the, the siege, let's drop stuff off. Including this, and this, and this this and this and this and this let's grab the toolkits and then let's refuel and refit this car so it's really it's ready to go next time we take it out Whew. this was a costly trip i mean we got what we were looking for but it was a costly trip then now one thing I'm not sure of I don't remember when we do the check of your threat level to determine how tough the siege should be but because I don't remember that I'm not going to start upgrading my command center until after the siege is over so let's uh, let's head in actually hmm. should I head in right this second maybe not maybe we should maybe I should I should catch up with the chat a little bit first and uh, maybe head in to deal with this siege after uh, after we've resolved this episode and started the next one. So let me let me catch up here a little bit because I'm sorry when I when I'm intensely engaged in some threat to my life, I absolutely am terrible at reading the chat at the same time. So I'm sure I missed a ton of stuff. Um, Ricebox asks, "Is there a reason why you never carry stamina items?" Uh, yeah, it's because I noticed that I I never remember to use them. Uh, and so because I never remember to use them, they end up feeling like they're taking up space. Like, I'll go through an entire combat where, you know, my character is just absolutely dying from lack of stamina. And at the end, I'll notice that I have three stamina items that I never used. And I've noticed myself doing that often enough that I just, you know, when I'm about to put stamina items in my inventory, I'm like, I'm just going to still have these when I come back home. And I want to use that inventory space for something else. So occasionally when I am going out, like going after play cards, I know I'm getting in big fights. I will bring them with me and try to remind myself to use them. But it's difficult for me. Um, let's see here. Oh, so Oh You Know Stuff says they've been playing a lot of State of Decay 1 Breakdown lately. Man, is it hard. Never realized how much I relied on gunslinging in State of Decay 2. Uh, yeah, and... Uh, yeah, so I agree that breakdown is hard. I mean, I, I was never able to play any harder than like level four or something. It's like when we when when Fogey went through and added the additional eighty eight levels that came with uh, Yo's, I was just like, okay, you go nuts, dude. Like I I'm not touching this at all. I couldn't possibly play test that, uh, much less have any idea if it was balanced. Um, Cogs is saying, oh, if only there was a State of Decay two breakdown mode. Uh, that, you know, we you know. We've thought about different ways that we could approach that. I'm not going to say anything that's going to give uh, Sonny a quote. Uh, <laughs> the last thing I need is, is you know, you know, State of Decay developer says there's going to be a breakdown mode for State of Decay 2 because I'm not saying that. Um, but your know, breakdown was a big uh, uh, inspiration for the structure that State of Decay 2 has. Uh, but but we didn't go all the way with it. So I could I could see us taking more lessons from Breakdown in the Future. I don't see us making an entirely new mode. Uh, just because every time you add a mode to the game, you, you're kind of fracturing the game a little bit more. That's a separate thing you have to support um, that's different from the other things. It takes attention away from, from the game as a whole. Um, it's one reason why, you know, there's a lot of players who love Breakdown who are frustrated by the fact that we don't make updates to Breakdown. Because, you know, because it would... 
it's tough to maintain multiple games simultaneously. And, you know, any time we spend on Breakdown is time we wouldn't be spending on the core game. And every time, all the time we spend on the core game is time we're not spending on Breakdown. And it's, you know, and, and maintaining both of them at the same time is, is a really big deal. You know, uh, we haven't touched Heartland in ages, you know, for, for similar reasons. And so the prospect of adding a new mode just sounds like, oh, we'll just fracture ourselves even more and make it even harder to keep up with, um, you know, what people want from all of those different modes. And so I could see us being inspired by Breakdown to, uh, you know, to vary up how the metagame works, that sort of thing. I could see us doing stuff like that. I don't see us adding an entire separate mode anytime soon. Aim to Please suggests it might be interesting to make Heartland characters unlockable characters, much the way characters were unlockable in Breakdown, or like the way that, you know, that you can get uh, uh, Red Talon recruits from Daybreak. That is something that we thought about. The, the problem is we would have to make completely new versions of them because their skills are devoted entirely to the specific base that was in Heartland. So we'd have to give them completely different skills and, and sort of remake them, which isn't, you know, a complete deal breaker or anything. But it also, we would have to put some other safety nets in place because, for instance... Like it, once you could put them in the legacy pool, if you could you get multiple copies of the same character in your legacy pool, have an entire community made out of Isbees. I mean that might be neat, but not that neat. <laughs> and, you know, it would kind of undermine some of the storytelling. And so was, we've been trying to avoid having a bunch of identical characters able to be dumped into your legacy pool, um, just because that just feels like. As much as that might be kind of neat and cute, it also kind of undermines the fantasy a little bit. And so we, we got to be cautious about decisions like that. <laughs> Mini Chan is like, all the Isbees! And Yoda loves Isby too. I love Isby. Isby is Isby's one of my favorite characters. I didn't come up with her at all. I believe that... Uh, actually, I'm not sure who's most responsible for Isby. I'd probably initially give credit for to uh, uh, to Andy Collins, our lead writer. Though I think there's a lot of people who contributed to Isby. Um but yeah, I'm I, I'm a big fan of Isby. I just love Isby's like superior attitude. It's just really funny to listen to. But uh, yeah, okay. I think. Oh, so hardcore stated K asks, how does the noise increase your threat level? So I'm not I'm not actually sure what you mean by the noise. I guess you might maybe you're talking about the fact that I said you know, like when I um. When I upgrade the uh, the command center, that you know, basically, yeah, having a bunch of activity at your base is what raises your threat level. Um, and so, a lot of the actions that you can perform at your base have as their cost. This raises the threat level because basically, having a big active base with people doing a bunch of stuff attracts the attention of the zombies. Um, and so, so, and, and that's actually that's a thing that we've sort of debated about a lot in, internally in the team. Originally, we actually called that stat noise. It wasn't called threat. It was called noise. Uh, and so you wanted to keep your noise level at your base down because it would attract zombies and lead to more sieges. Um, and then we changed it to threat. Uh, I wasn't actually in on that decision to change it to threat. I believe it was just meant to communicate more like what it was about. Like, like so the play players understood noise isn't just this like silly, oh, whatever noise. You know, they wouldn't just ignore it. But like, oh, threat. Oh, this is specifically about zombies are going to show up at my base because of this. Um, and so... Uh, so I think it was meant to more clearly communicate, but I think it ended up actually miscommunicating more than it communicated because threat suggests not something you're doing to your base. It suggests something that's ambient in the world. And so there's this feeling that, you know, when it says threat, that should mean, oh, well, well how how dangerous are the zombies around my base? How many zombies are around my base? That it should mean that. Um, and, but all of the things that triggered are actually things that are about your people making noise. And so there is still some, some, a, a disconnect there. So one of the things that we've, you know, been toying with, you know, in, in like the infestation work we've been doing in the PTR is maybe splitting those concepts um, and, and seeing, you know, if we can sort of make it, make it a little bit clearer. Uh, okay. Hardcore State of K says, don't guns make noise also? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that actually if you do things like, um, I, I, now I'm not certain, but I think if you do things like training people with guns and stuff at the base, that the gunfire will like, like sort of, will simulate that that additional gunfire is raising the, 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 the threat level. We don't, but the threat level that we track in the in the base screen is all about base action specifically. It's not about the actual people firing guns in the real-time simulated version of the game. 
which will also attract zombies. So, like, if you've got your know, people in your watchtower shooting at zombies or, or whatever, people getting into fights around the base, that will attract the local zombies. It just doesn't feed into the risk of a siege, which is sort of... It, it, that's operating at a different level of the simulation. Uh, so those are kind of two different things. They both kind of have roughly the same effect, just in different scales of the game. Uh, okay, I think that's probably enough for now, so let's wrap up this video. There's a subscribe button. Uh, we're going to keep playing State of Decay 2 right now, so uh, I'll put a link to that video right there, and you can keep following along if you're watching later on YouTube.